Welcome to the Startup Grind. Just a quick uh, words about Startup Grind and start, what, what is Startup Grind basically. So it is a global network which um, already expanded to 175 cities and 70 countries in which we organize events like this, such, uh, uh, such events uh, in which we interview and basically host a local entrepreneur, successful entrepreneur in, uh, in which we conduct and ask him questions about his grind and basically how he ended up doing business and got to this point. Uh, so today we have founder of Pitek Plus Plus group of businesses. Uh, he was born in Bucharest, Romania. His results in school bought him a scholarship in INSA Lyon, where he studied computer engineering. His entrepreneurial project started at the end of 2005 when he founded his own IT services company in Cluj Napoca uh, after 13 years of living and working in France. Please welcome with a round of applause Bogdan Heria. So Bogdan, we usually kick it off the interview with the uh, 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 going back question. Uh, so tell us about yourself, how you were as a kid, uh, what were your hobbies, uh, what led you into business basically? Um, yeah, going back uh, in Romania before, uh, before leaving for France, so I left Romania when I was uh, uh, 18 years old, so just after, after I finished the high school. Uh, I was uh, kind of uh, geek, not the coolest guy in the in the school. First of first in class. Uh, that's why I get uh, to to France. That's uh, how I, I get into the the program. The, the, I, I got the scholarship and okay. I left uh, I left for for France. Okay. Uh, and it, it was quite an experience because leaving uh, Romania in '93. Uh, for France, uh, it was quite uh, a challenge for, for us, uh, even though we were quite a big group, so we were around 12, 15 Romanian, uh, uh, my age that started the, 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 the program. Uh, but it was quite difficult, I had to work uh, starting the, the second year because we didn't get a lot of money with the, with the scholarship. Yeah. So, it was quite a forging experience. I, I know what what uh, means to work hard. That, yeah, that's like hustle and grind. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going back. I'm going to go back with a, with a question. Were you the type of kid that liked um, tearing apart things and toys and finding out how they work and so on? I mean, what was the passion and the hobby that got you into programming, coding, and um, Did your parents have me? <coughs> yeah, I mean, I, I get into it because my parents were uh, teaching at the Technical University in Bucharest. Okay. Both parents and uh, one of the students uh, were, he was just uh, putting up computers uh, before 89. So I got the computer uh, first time an uh, uh, AC80 uh, yeah. when I was uh, around 7 years old, something like this. Okay. Uh, and the first uh, stuff we did was uh, on BASIC, the palette and compiler, uh, and uh, the, it started like, like this. I, I wouldn't say I was very good at uh, programming, uh, but I, was, I had the background, it was, I was quite good at mathematics uh, in, in high school. Uh, and uh, it started like this. Afterwards, my my hobbies, I I don't remember. I, I uh, was doing something specific. I, we were uh, playing games a lot with with the computers because all the other kids in the in the building where we were, they, they were kind of geeks. Yeah. Uh, and they all all of us uh, had computers. Even though at that time uh, having a computer it was quite hard to to, to have. Um, and uh, I remember I was uh, giving courses in math when I was around uh, 15, something like something like this. So I was in high school and I was giving courses to, to other, uh, to other kids. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, 
in math and a little bit in IT. But was, yeah. was it already a business? Like, did you? I mean, it was not like paid? a business, but I, I was paid for this. So okay. my mother was doing this in math a lot. So he was doing uh, trainings, uh, particular trainings for, yeah. for kids yeah. uh, to, to go to, to university. And for the smaller kids, I was doing uh, this also. Okay, so we got into entrepreneurship <laughs> quite an uh, early yeah, stage yeah. in life. Um, so you moved to Cluj basically with your right. business. Yeah, when I How did come you? Uh, in fact, I was uh, planning to come back to Romania from the very first day I went to France. Okay. So I, I, I was planning to do that, uh, that at, at some point, but I tried the uh, first time in 2001. Coming back? Coming back to Romania. So I was working for a big IT service company in, in France, in Lyon, uh, and uh, they were looking uh, to establish uh, some, some sort of partnership with a company here in, in Eastern Europe, in Romania, I, I proposed and I, I did a research in, in uh, Bucharest and, uh, and in, uh, in Cluj. I, so I visited maybe 10 companies in Bucharest and 10 companies in, in Cluj. And uh, it was the first time that I met uh, Boyku, uh, with Arabs and then Dava, AGS at that time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, we ended up to choosing uh, Cluj. We ended up to. to we never actually worked with, with the company in Cluj, but uh, the idea was that Cluj was better as a place to do business and for work. People yeah. were different, the, the companies were different, uh, the people were more uh, relaxed. Western and, European somehow? Uh, I wouldn't say Western European, but they, they were, uh, how can I say, they, they were uh, uh, they were they, they were uh, in, in Bucharest that people were just too too much. I mean, and and the, the city was not okay at that point. And in between 2002 and 2005 in Bucharest, it was a huge mess. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the, the actually we chose to to came to to Cluj, even though we never started. So. Three years after, when I get another opportunity, I, I did it by myself. Okay, so for the, for the first time, didn't uh, didn't want to. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. So you've been uh, a businessman like ten years already. Um, do you think uh, like being an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur and, and a businessman? Do you think that you have to be a jack of all trades uh, in terms of? Uh, know a little bit of coding, a little bit of uh, marketing, a little bit of HR maybe. Do you think that successful entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs have to have these skills or uh, do the, more, the biggest percentage go into entrepreneurship? Uh, I, th I think it's, it's better, you don't need to have everything, but uh, at least you know, you, you need to know a lot about the business you, you're doing. I mean, if you're starting to sell tomorrow, uh, I don't know, uh, computers, you have to know a little bit about computers. Yeah, so you I mean, should have been working already? In the yes, yes. I, I, th I think that uh, someone who is starting a business and knows nothing about, I don't know, if tomorrow we'll start a business in travel, we'll take people that knows stuff about travel. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, uh, set up a team that have a lot of knowledge in, in, in that business. Uh, I was doing a lot of stuff in, in my former company in, in France and what I did when I came to Romania is that I basically replicated what I, I learned uh, when, when I was working as an employee uh, in, in my for, former company. Yeah. Um. And afterwards I learned all the other stuff. I mean, Marketing, uh, HR, um, yeah. uh, and all the other. <laughs> so you just came along the yes, way. You don't yes. have to be perfect for the. For no, the no. Product. I think I, I, I was uh, quite ambitious about, and I set it up a goal about what I want uh, to do from the very beginning. And uh, uh, afterwards, you're you're learning on the way. Uh, it's better if if you have someone to help along the, the okay. way. 
but you can do it by yourself. I mean, it's, uh, and it depend, depends a lot on the context, depends a lot, but it's better to be open and to try to understand everything by yourself at the very beginning at, at least. Okay. Because afterwards, when the company is growing, you have to hire people that take right. care of the all the all the other. How how soon did you got a, a mentor? Was it a, a another businessman, a successful <coughs> businessman, or a woman, uh, or was it a, like a life coach? It it, it, it was uh, it was uh, someone who worked with uh, with me in France, okay. uh, a friend of mine. Uh, was an entrepreneur uh, up to a, uh, a certain level, and afterwards he sold his company. He and we worked together in, in, in that former company. I guess. Okay. In uh, before coming to me, so so, he guided you in setting up things and. Yeah, uh, it it uh, it went up to a point where uh, um, the mentorship was over, and afterwards uh, it was. Uh, more uh, setting me back than helping. So at, uh, at some point we split, we split it up. Okay, okay. Uh, fair enough in terms of growth. So, yeah. Um, you definitely are a leader and also a manager. So, what was what 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 do you think that are the most needed skills in in the role of leadership and in the role of management? What was the things that got you like really successful in terms of building a team or company? Because it depends, of course, on the context. Everything has to match. Yeah, um, I, I, I wouldn't say I, I'm, I'm managing stuff, but I wouldn't say this is my point of strong point. yeah my my strong point. I'm quite good of in in. Uh, Helping people uh, achieve their objectives, and uh, this is how I see the, the leadership. I mean, uh, today we're working with a big team. We have a, a staff of 20 people. Yeah. Uh, we were all the, the afternoon discussing about strategy and, and uh, where the company will go in the next years. And I think what it's important is to detect the, the right people that will be the, the next leaders and help them grow. The, yeah. the, that's why a, the, a good leader is, is doing. And afterwards, it's about empathy, how you're uh, feeling about the, the people that are in front of you, how you making them achieve what they want to achieve, see how they're fitting with the culture and the strategy of the company and so on. It's, it's quite, it was quite easy for, for us because most of the People that are uh, around me in the company uh, right now uh, were very young when they started, so they were um, students or they they were just. They're still in the yeah. company. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, summing up, uh, like the leadership part and the management part and the coaching part, would you like uh, consider or how do you consider it in terms of thinking and planning? Would you go the long term planning or the short term? What was good for you? When did you realize if one was doing bad for you or the other one? If it's clear the question. Uh, I'm not sure that I understand the question. Like, do you think um, <coughs> which one is more better in terms of planning or thinking? Is it long term or short term or medium in terms of different <coughs> contexts? Again, business, mm -hmm. development, and so on. I mean, both, both sides are very important. I mean, you, you have to have a, a big plan. You have a you have to have a, a long term strategy. That's for sure. And you have to know where are you going with your with your company. Um, and uh, on the other hand, we were quite opportunistic. I mean, uh, when someone some, something new appeared in, in the in the picture, we uh, didn't hesitate to take the time to see if it's something that it fits with what what's yeah. uh, in the in the big picture in the bigger plan, and uh, jumping new areas. That's how we started to work on our new projects. That's how we started to work on the on the on the startups we are launching. Okay. Today. Yeah, that's what that that is why I ask because startups nowadays and you know blog posts and so on. Everybody says no business plan. Uh, just go do execute launch 
that's why in, term, in, in this context. So, uh, I guess I mean, you also have to have. Yeah, yes and no. It depends on how you're executing the idea. I mean, uh, what I did in the, in the very early uh, times when I started to try to do some, some to execute some ideas is that uh, I invested without knowing how, what, what's a startup. So I, I either uh, have founders that came to Cluj and we started to work on a, an idea and we tried to pilot it and uh, we ended up failing. Yeah. Okay, so it was four or five years ago. Or uh, I put some money in, in, in companies that, uh, yeah, uh, at some point I think they will succeed, but I'm not very sure that, and we don't have any control on what's happening with, with uh, those companies. Uh, and right now what, what we are doing is that uh, I'm trying to control what uh, the projects that we are launching. I mean, the other, uh, the other um, strategy is to, make, uh, to invest a small amount of money to make an MVP and try to raise money with yeah. uh, VCs. Money with VCs. Yeah. And uh, at some point you're losing the control of, of your company. Uh, it's two different. I mean, uh, what you were saying uh, earlier. Uh, try to start with an idea, execute, and, and see if it's working. Right. Okay, but before executing and doing all this stuff, you have to uh, play with the numbers, yes, and see if the idea will will uh, will uh, be. I mean, four years ago we were thinking about building a. Taxi app. Yeah. Okay. And we played with the numbers and we saw, okay, if we are giving a phone to all the taxi drivers in the city, it will cost us this. It's not, it's not viable. We cannot invest yeah. this amount of money. Uh, two years after, when uh, Clever did the partnership with uh, Orange, I think, they had yeah. The, yeah. And uh, all the uh, taxi drivers had the smartphones. The, 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 they were the right yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So first things first, uh, even yeah, if it's a good idea, you have to play with the numbers. You have to see if you're uh, the right moment in time. You can be too late or too in, in advance of, of, of your time. And uh, you will flop because you don't have the market. You have to invest a lot of money and don't yeah. have the money. So. Uh, you said something uh, previously and matches really good with my next question that you were opportunistic mm -hmm. and I've also read something in a media outlet that you said that um, you recommend people and close friends that they should trust their gut feeling or like uh, uh, their instinct. Yeah. Uh, what, how has this like served you uh, until now in business? Like was it more successful than less successful in, in, in terms of I, I think, your gut? I, I think uh, it's, it, it was more su successful, I, yeah. I think, and uh, as a, as a uh, life philosophy, I am trying to see the the bright, the bright parts of of, uh, of things. Uh, I I trust it a lot, my guts, and I get disappointed by people, for example. Yeah. So, uh, you, I, I, you should do research a little bit uh, when it's coming up to companies or people. When you're working with a company or you're working with people, you should do a, a little bit of research before. So even on the company, even, even if your gut says that okay, it's, it's something good, could yeah. be, maybe there there are some risks. Uh, it's better to, to do some research. I would say. Okay. But that, until, now, I, I, yeah, until now, I, I, I mean, if you have to make a decision in the very fast, you're gathering all the information that you can gather, at, uh, and afterwards you have to trust your your feelings. I mean, yes. I mean, the other the other uh, strategy is to, if you ha have any doubt, you're not going. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm not like this. I mean, that's I, that's yeah. a good advice. I mean, you said that you want to find the next Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how are you planning to do this? Have you found him? Like, um, 
Uh, what's your strategy? Uh, I mean, strategy is related to one of the other projects that we launched two years ago, and uh, we have we have this evening with us the new managing director of Academy Plus, Adrian, is with us to, tonight. Uh, and uh, I think it's through this kind of program that we'll find the next uh, Mark, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, mm -hmm. The idea is to find someone who will be uh, bold enough to uh, challenge something that is established. Okay. Someone who, even though, uh, I think technical skills are very important because Zuckerberg was very skilled uh, when he started uh, Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. Um, but it's also about uh, thinking out of the box, uh, seeing stuff that uh, other people are not able to, to, to see. Uh, and and uh, we are trying to do this and we are trying to, to train people to do this through the program that we established. Yeah. With, uh, with the You're talking program. about uh, Academy yes. Plus? Yes. yes. Uh, so you're, you're running it already for two years? Yeah. Is it like more successful and successful over over the, the year? Yeah, I mean we we started the last year with sixty people. Right now we have uh, one hundred forty students. Okay. Uh, after the applications and after the yes, after after the all the process uh, okay. uh, was, was done, uh, a lot of high school students this year. Thirty seven high school high school students, uh, and. Uh, and we are preparing the, 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 the people that are in the academy to be confronted with, with the unknown. So yeah. to come up with new ways of sol solving solving the problems we are trying to do. Okay. And the, what, what will happen in the next months, uh, we'll try to gather companies in the, in the market that will help us to uh, bring problems to the students and the students will give solutions, new ways of solving, uh, solving yeah. the problems. Being the outside thinking. Yes. Uh, and the next step would be to uh, push the, the kids to uh, fund companies. I mean, once we, we are ready and have yeah. uh, uh, something that it's, uh, it's uh, running uh, correctly because we still have to find a, a business model that is sustainable for, for right. the academy. Uh, we'll take it to the next level, and the, the idea would be to have founders that will come up from from the academy, and we'll we'll have to have pe people that are coming from the business area, from the business schools, from the design schools, yeah. uh, schools, and, and and putting them together to to, to have uh, uh, things. Yeah. Uh, next team from yeah, yeah. each uh, each side. Yeah. Um, what were the difficulties in terms? This is an unconventional project in school, also. Mm -hmm. So, what was the difficulties that you've met? Like, and also a startup for Peter Cross Plus, you can you can yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, put it under yeah, umbrella. Yeah, yeah. What were the difficulties in challenging the society, the bias, the? Uh, I think the the most difficult uh, part was to convince people that uh, we are. Um, uh, we, we, we are doing this uh, as a serious project, not as uh, something that will start and will stop after two months. Yeah. Uh, that the process is okay and the, 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 the people that are going out from this program will be uh, trained uh, enough to uh, be hired by the companies in the, in the market. This, is, this was the most difficult and that's why uh, even though last year we had 1,000 uh, people that uh, applied, applied. Okay. Uh, we only uh, ended up with 60 people uh, because the program is uh, quite intensive, so you have to be very passionate uh, about the IT. Not good because we are not uh, measuring the IT skills that people had at the very beginning. So passion. It's about passion, it's about uh, working uh, in, in a team, it's about um, thinking out of the box. These are the, are the qualities that we are searching at the, the, the people that are uh, coming to the, to the academy. Afterwards they are getting IT skills, but the IT skills are just uh, something that is uh, 
uh, to do that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, tell us about a little bit of, of the another startup you have, which is uh, a lot of uh, media presence and mm. press coverage. Uh, the parking plus plus. How is it going? How did you came up with the idea? Uh, maybe a couple of difficulties which you have. Yeah. Or had maybe. Uh, yeah. Solved. So uh, I I uh, still have a lot of uh, contacts with uh, with friends. Uh, and yeah. uh, uh, two years, three years ago, I was part of um, a jury uh, called Startup uh, Startup uh, Academy in, in Paris, and uh, uh, the, the idea is to have around 200 uh, uh, projects that are at, at the level uh, of uh, of financing at, in, in between. Two to three million euros, okay. uh, and uh, they are we are shortlisting them as as a jury, and uh, at the end we have a winner. So they are pitching, and we have a winner. And uh, three years ago, uh, we had at least uh, three or four startups uh, in this area, in this smart city party yeah. and area. And I I looked at the at the um, at the. Uh, the Projects and uh, the guys, uh, they, they were not tackling the problem in the right way. I mean, they were trying to solve only a small part of the problem, okay. or uh, they were not thinking global. Or and uh, we we know that there is there is a problem with, uh, with this uh, asset in, in, in town. So we, we yeah, have a lot. You have uh, one uh, parking spot for six cars in in Europe. Yeah. In oh, Europe. Europe. In Europe. Okay. okay. Uh, so uh, what's happening is that uh, you're not taking your car when you're going to, to, to the city, or you have uh, difficulties to find your your parking spot and, and so on. So why uh, we are uh, talking about public parking spaces? So uh, what we try to do is the, we try to tackle the problem for uh, all the angles. So it takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of money, and uh, hopefully we uh, the project was developed uh, in, in, uh, through the uh, cluster, to the IT cluster here in Cluj Napoca, uh, because the cluster got some European grants uh, through the smart city uh, program. And what we are doing is that we are bringing together the information related to the public parking spots. But we are also trying to uh, get out in the, in the in the market the private parking spots that are in, uh, unused. Okay. So the idea would be at some point to have some sort of Airbnb for parking spaces. Okay. With the ability to access uh, through your smartphone to these parking spaces. So we right. have a technology right now that you can be used for access control and. Uh, what we are doing right now is that the platform is ready and we are discussing partnerships uh, with the parking spaces and with the parking spaces. Uh, we are discussing with the big operator, telecom operators, uh, energy operators that are very interested in the smart city area and they are, uh, they are pushing the project afterwards to, to the municipalities. Uh, and afterwards, we are discussing with the other startups that are want to use our technology. Uh, or we are um, discussing with parking operators that want to have a new technology in their access control uh, systems. Okay, what was the biggest uh, difficult thing to? I mean, what was the biggest um, thing you were having in development? Or? The, the 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 most difficult is that it's even though it's uh, the European grants are free money. Yeah. Uh, it's very difficult to, to obtain to, them, to, not to obtain them, but to uh, manage the project. It's it's very you have a lot of paper to fill. You have a, a lot of effort instead of uh, putting this effort on building the product. You're putting the effort on filling the papers and reporting that you spend the money in the right way and so on. So yeah. uh, maybe 30, 30 percent of uh, the, the time of the, the project manager was spent on. on, on which is, I mean, you have free money, but on the other hand, you 
you're spending the time uh, on, on saying what you done with the money. So uh, on the other hand, when you're taking money from from investors, you have to report also. So it's yeah. I, think the, per, I think the percentage is much smaller than yeah, the, yeah, the European yeah, money. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Uh, so you're in business and you are in business like for ten years already. Have you thought about becoming a business angel or an investor? Uh, local <coughs> yeah, what what we are doing right now is that uh, we are trying to do, uh, and I, I started to do it uh, maybe four or five years ago. Um, what we are trying to do right now is that we will continue to focus on the ideas that we are discussing internally and we have okay. uh, other projects that are incubating. Uh, right. We have another project that, which is quite advanced and it will be launched uh, in the, at the beginning of the next year. We, we didn't uh, uh, we didn't do a lot of uh, communication around this project. It's related to the online payment system and, and uh, it will be announced maybe at the beginning of the next year. Okay. Uh, and we have other projects that are incubating and uh, what I'm doing is that uh, the idea is that uh, we found a co-founder in, in the company or outside the company and we are executing the idea that we we setting up. We, we, I have invested in other companies that are related with, uh, with uh, e-health or uh, wellness uh, and the, the, this new idea is in this area of uh, Sports, uh, wellness, um, and we will see. You. I mean, we will do a, an MVP, and we'll, uh, we'll most probably will we'll try to, to raise money because uh, it's something that is quite difficult to to do, do from it. here. Yeah, from yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, On the other hand, what we are doing is that uh, in this very moment we are discussing with two companies from Bucharest uh, that are established. They already have uh, revenues. And we will make a, 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 joint, a venture. joint venture, and we will do a, a sector equity. Um, okay. Spot. Okay, that's interesting. So basically, most of the things and advisorship you're doing inside and internally, then then outside and from the outside stuff. Uh, I mean, I mean, we are we are. Uh, I I try to put uh, some time in. in events and trying to participate and uh, do some mentorship but I don't have a lot of time this is this is one of the things and I apologize once more for last <laughs> last week because it was about one of the projects that we are running and uh, uh, but I mean uh, it's not only about me it's also about the, 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 the we have other people in, 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 in our company that can do mentorships with uh, uh, people that have ideas, and I think in uh, here in Romania, uh, before doing mentoring uh, around how to execute an idea, uh, we should uh, think about also how to have people that have uh, basic ba basic knowledge about uh, entrepreneurship in general. Okay. okay, how to build a business plan, how to what is a cash flow. Uh, and, and so on and so forth, the, so, okay, yeah. the basics of the basics, uh, before starting to uh, execute an idea. Because on the other hand, okay, you're executing an idea, but once you have uh, the product, you have to sell it. And uh, before you know that you will sell it or you're not, you're not sell it, you will run out of money. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> that's, how, <laughs> that's how you're done. So, I, I hope that uh, most of the company that uh, we go out from the here is from the ecosystem in, in Cluj, they will not flop because they they were not good uh, managers. I mean, they they wouldn't manage the cash flow correctly. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are you open for outside ideas pitching to you, like I mean, get <coughs> for like, let's say tech. Equity. Uh, yeah, I mean, we we uh, I'm seeing a lot of people. That, that there's a lot of people coming to us with, with ideas, and okay. even uh, we we have <coughs> we have a pro program uh, that we're calling FedEx internally. 
FedEx? Okay. The FedEx Day. We are doing uh, internal projects with the, with the people from the, the, the teams from, from inside the company. When people are proposing projects, they can work on whatever project they want during 24 hours. Okay. Uh, some type of hackathon or something. Some type of internal hackathon. So uh, they can work on whatever problem they, they, they want. And they will be pitching at the end of uh, these 24 hours. And uh, at the end of, uh, of this day, uh, this year, we had a very good idea related to social entrepreneurship. And uh, we decided okay. to execute it and to launch it uh, next year. I don't know if it will fly, but it's a, it's a very good idea. It's in, and it's in the mood of what's happening here in inclusion. Okay, so well, that will be interesting to see. A lot of things preparing <laughs> on fire. Uh, okay, so give me your best and your worst business decision until now. Uh, I think the, the, best, uh, the best business decision was not to sell the company eight years ago. Okay. After three years of running the no. company, you got already a proposal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It What's was the uh, number? It, it, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was not. It was a uh, uh, acquisition. It was not. They, they, they were wanting. They wanted. They wanted to have me in the team, and they wanted yeah. to have the team uh, with. The, uh, so we we didn't uh, even discuss about the numbers. Uh, the, you just said. I, I just said. I mean, uh, I uh, sleep over the discussion, and uh, I came back and I said, "I know I'm not interested. I didn't start two years ago to end up uh, from where I started. I mean, ending up in the working for a for an IT company. I was doing that uh, France. in France. So uh, even though I mean, it was quite uh, appealing because it came up uh, in a moment where, where it was quite difficult for us. So, uh, yeah, uh, it, was a, it was a tough decision. And, uh, and uh, the worst one, um, it's, uh, it's even more difficult. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think I think we we uh, we didn't. I didn't saw uh, coming what's happening right now in, in Cluj. The fact that the the market is shifting uh, okay. and, uh, and from I, outsourcing to product yeah, development. Yeah, and uh, we should have done it uh, one or two years before. Okay, and we started only two years and a half uh, uh, thinking, discussing, and really putting the effort in, into that direction. Uh, maybe we should have done it uh, a little bit before. I tried to do it before, but I, I didn't know how to do it. I mean, we start do we started four years ago working on an idea, uh, building it. In the same time, I, I don't know if you know about the project called Airtime. It was uh, started no. by uh, financed by Sean Parker. Uh, it was a chat chat roulette without porn. Okay. So uh, yeah, we started to implement the exact same idea in the same time that uh, Airtime started it. They started with twenty millions at that time, but they flopped. So uh, we stopped. I mean, they uh, we were executing in parallel, and we saw what happened with, with the platform. So yeah, yeah okay. and they, we decided to stop. The, Okay. The platform. So, when you said that you didn't saw it coming, uh, the shift from outsourcing to product, did, like the gut feeling and the feeling which you have being from from another perspective and from another seat, has the gap uh, occurred and happened really so fast? I mean, in terms of months, maybe one year or. No, but it's exponential. I mean, uh, if you're starting uh, two years before, it's not it's not the same impact. It doesn't have the same impact two years in, in, in yeah. In, yeah. Uh, what I'm saying is that the outsourcing industry and the IT service industry will continue to live and we will shift to a different uh, 
model we will do uh, stuff that are more complex with more added value and we will continue to work uh, and I think we will continue to, to work even in Romania we have clients we are starting to have clients here in Romania that are able to, 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 to pay to pay and work with us okay uh, but it's uh, yeah for for the for the Teams for for the people that are working in the IT services, and we have some examples here in the in the room. It's more appealing to work for the IT service company. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Going your way. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, yeah. Some, somehow, I mean, uh, both ways are are difficult. Starting a new IT service company nowadays, or starting uh, uh, to build a product, uh, is difficult. Uh, the IT service way, out doing outsourcing, it's more appealing, it's more easy, and, and, and so on. Um, but it's uh, how can I say? It's uh, at some point you. It, it's always the same. I mean, you're working for the other people with ideas. You're executing other people ideas, and you're just waiting and waiting. And at some point, you'll say, okay, I'm. Mean, I'm smart enough to do it by myself, I yeah. cannot do it uh, for, for the others. Yeah. So this is my next question. What would you recommend like for somebody that's going now into entrepreneurship, tech, IT, business, startup, what would you I mean top three things to be careful about? Uh, careful about I mean uh, it's it's like uh, I know if you saw the Jack Ma uh, interview about what you will do at the in the 20s, in the 30s, in from, the 30s, uh, from founder of Alibaba. Yeah. So what I've done in my life is that until the, I was 30 years old, I worked with people and I get mentored by people and I learned a lot. And afterwards I started buying my company. Okay. I, don't know, I, I don't say that you cannot start your company in, in when you are in your 20s. But uh, from my point of view, you have to learn something about the business. Uh, and when I'm saying business, could be the IT business or other business, in, and, and start your company or startup afterwards. We are discussing about a lot about tech and uh, tech startup, but you don't have only tech startups. Yeah, was, of course. Yeah, I was uh, uh, last week in Bucharest, uh, the uh, Ernst and Young Entrepreneur of the Year. Uh, Award. Award and uh, uh, most promising uh, entrepreneur of the year was uh, the founder of Salad Box. So okay, it's not it's not uh, the fantasy. It's, yeah, yes, it's not a tech company, but uh, the team built the company that is I mean, they are doing 15, 15 maybe twenty million euros per year uh, in three years. So that's nice. That's good. <laughs> so, just uh, I mean, I don't know if they, 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 they are not, uh, in their thirties, they are in their twenties. Uh, I didn't get to discuss a lot uh, with with them, but uh, I, I I I'm sure that in the team they have people that know how uh, what's about eating salads and uh, doing this stuff because it's, you're not you're not getting into a business without knowing how to exactly yeah. exactly right. exactly um, what would you add to the local ecosystem startup ecosystem to thrive uh, better faster yeah some fuel yeah some fuel that means some money okay, okay. We, we don't have enough money uh, for the startups here in the, in the ecosystem so what we are trying to do also is to see if we cannot uh, set up some uh, local uh, funds here we, okay. we have more and more funds that are coming here in, in, in Romania because the, the market is starting to be interesting and uh, we have good ideas that are coming and popping up every day uh, but still not enough and that's why <coughs> what the, the BVB in Bucharest uh, uh, is trying to do with IRO and, and all the other uh, initiatives in the market are very good. So we don't have enough business angels, we don't have enough seed money, we don't have enough uh, uh, seed money afterwards and, and yeah. then 
Yeah, and anyhow, uh, when you're trying to to raise a Serie A, you have to go abroad. So we have to have more money. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. until now. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm coming to a couple of uh, last questions. Um, what do you think that's going to be like the big thing in five next in the next five ten years? Like ball technology, what's going to disrupt? What's going to be? Uh, I think we'll have uh, two or three stuff that will happen in the yeah, five to ten years, I would say. Um, the, the, the industries that are related to the energy will be disrupted. Okay. okay. So we'll, I, at least I hope that we will have uh, clean, uh, free energy. Okay, in the night, in the next five to ten years, so we'll be able to produce our own energy and be auto sustainable only in this area. In multiple contexts, you in multiple cars, contexts, you yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Okay. So what uh, uh, Tesla is doing right now on a smaller scale in five to ten years, the technology will be uh, affordable, and we will be uh, will have. Uh, Small producer of energy everywhere. So, okay. Okay. Uh, and the other one, uh, I think, will be the artificial intelligence. Okay. And we'll, we'll be at a uh, level where a lot of stuff we are doing today will, will be uh, taken care of. This, this one. Okay, so replying to emails. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll see how how, yeah. the, how this technology will be used, but uh, there's a lot of uh, tasks that can be taken over by, by this part. Okay, I even see, I even saw a couple of startups that were pitching at Pioneers this year. So also based, uh, personal assistant based on artificial intelligence. So it's going to be quite interesting. Um, <coughs> knowing what you know now, if you would start again, like, what would you do differently? Yeah, I think I answered to the question earlier, but um, uh, I think uh, uh, I I I could. I, I would have invested in education earlier also. So okay. uh, we started the program, the, the educational program, a little bit too uh, late, I think. Also from a business perspective, but also from a personal perspective. Uh, okay. <laughs> not, I mean, not yeah. that, but like, I mean, in terms of actions, the shift decisions maybe or something like that, which is also connected to the business, but. Yeah, I think I, I would have spent more time with my family. Okay. So uh, it's important to <laughs> yeah to have a, yeah to to have a good balance in, in between. Uh, yeah, and from the business point of view, I think we we, we focused a, uh, a lot on ourselves until two three years ago, uh, and what we we were do, doing with the training programs, we were doing this internally. And uh, it's better if you're having a, a, a more open approach to, to the policy, if you can <coughs> solve the problem uh, on a more uh, global scale, I would say, or for the whole uh, local market, yeah. it's even better even for, for, for your own company. Okay, okay. Um, those, are, those, those were my questions. Uh, we'll be taking three questions from the audience. So if uh, anybody else would like to ask Bogdan a question? Uh, we have three questions available for you, so feel free to jump in. Anything that runs to your mind. Would like to know that I didn't answer and Bogdan didn't. I didn't ask and Bogdan didn't answer. Nobody? Yeah. I would like to start my outsourcing the testing services company. How would I find clients? How would I find the space to work? Something like that. I mean, uh, the problem today is not finding the clients, in my opinion. Okay, we, there, there's a lot of business 
uh, in the wild and it's quite easy to uh, find clients. I mean, you have a lot of uh, marketplaces where you can find business and you can start like this if, if you want to start very small. Uh, it's about networking also. I mean, you, you have to go outside in Romania or abroad, depends on what's your market that you're targeting. If you want to start it here in Cluj, you have to know the companies or uh, and you have to uh, have a differentiator. I mean, if you're doing the same thing that the others are doing, it's, uh, it will be more difficult. So you have to, to have something, a, a key differentiator factor to, to find the, the client. And afterwards, the, the, what is difficult is to find the, research, the right resources today not finding the clients, so you, your first employees and, and so on. So this is the, the hardest part nowadays. Thank you. Next question. Okay. Uh, thank you Bogdan for coming and accepting my invitation. Uh, we can also talk uh, after we can serve some uh, coffee, drinks, uh, juice. So feel free to ask Bogdan. I think he will stay uh, for a couple of minutes also. So thank you guys uh, again for coming. And hopefully uh, I will see you at the next event with another speaker. So have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you.